Hey guys, it's Chris Bate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. I'm sorry, I know it's been a while. Uh, please forgive me for that. It's been a lot going on. I've got a new job, uh, working all the time, ungodly hours, and just some family issues. And I apologize about it being so long. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. So if you guys can bear with me, we'll see about getting back into all this stuff. What I'd like to look at today is Devil May Cry 5. I just recently installed this game, and uh, basically I just want to get in there and see what we can find. And I always recommend starting off with health. You know, go ahead and get your infinite health, get that out of the way, and then, you know, you're free to, you know, go explore more complex things, which we will do also, just not in this video. What we want to do today is just go ahead and find infinite health, get started, and I'd like to maybe do a series on this and just see, you know, find everything we can possibly find you know like we did in Dishonor 2 and we'll just see how it goes you know so I apologize again about not being able to uh, get vids out to you guys and uh, I'm, I'm now back where I'm ready to get back into the swing of things I got everything settled here so you know I'm ready to go again so thank you guys for sticking with me I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring up uh, the game and everything I need and we'll go ahead and get started all right, I want to change some of the volume on here. It's just so it's, the game's not overpowering me. So let me get back to the main screen here. And I'm just going to continue the game I'd already started, which I'm right at the beginning of it anyway. So, And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead. And I know the 7.0 is out. I haven't got it yet. I'm going to. But uh, the same thing can be done on 7.0, and I believe uh, a newer one has come out. I know that uh, Dark Bite is about to release a new one, that it's available to his Patreons people now. That may be a little too loud still. If it is, I'm sorry. Uh, let me uh, turn the sound down some more. It's just too loud. Put all of it on one, and there we go. All right. So basically what we want to do is make sure that we have a health populated before we begin any type of scan. There, it's populated now. But what I like to do is go ahead and take a hit first. That way everything is registered in the system, and then we can begin looking for it. That would be neat to find later to see if maybe we could gain some height on our jump ability and we'll look into that next go around if that sounds good to you i know there's an enemy here and we're going to start our search we're going to take a hit then we're going to start our scan that way we know all the aobs are set we know all the values are set and uh, we can find it a little bit easier also, I know this as well that, you know, I know, as listen, you go over health all the time. I know how to do this. So I just want to say that's wonderful that you say, listen, this is getting boring to you. That means that you're at that next level. That's good. That's the stage I want you to get to. Because you got to start out with these easy things before you can go into more complex things. You always want to get your infinite health, things like that. That way you ain't got to worry about being attacked while you're trying to find something else. So... Keep that in mind, you know, because you're going to be doing this a lot, and that's usually the first thing you're going to do is try to find infinite health in any game. So, all right, so we've taken some damage. We want to go ahead and start our initial search. I always start with the float value, and I'm going to go ahead and start with default. I'm not going to click on simple values right now, especially with a 64-bit game. You never know what the values are going to be. And we're going to go with unknown. All we have is a little bar up here, so we don't know how it's being calculated. So we're going to go with unknown value. And I may speed through some of these scans, so uh, if you see the bid cut off, I apologize. That's just I'm just bypassing some waiting. All right. So you say we got over a billion addresses, and your system will probably slow down a little bit. That's normal. It's just keeping up with all these addresses, so it's really putting a load on your system. Somebody had asked also, how come Cheat Engine seems to freeze if you got multiple scan tabs up? Well, if it's monitoring so many scan tabs, and you got addresses in all these scan tabs, it's going to lock your system down. So, you know, be careful with that. 64-bit games you want to go as loose as possible so <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, take some more damage I 
We're just gonna let him well on us and take some damage and then move away. All right. Make sure also you see how the health is. You know you're hit and then it, the health bar kind of gradually goes down. Wait, make sure your health bar went all the way completely down before you do your decrease value or your increase value. Okay, don't do it in the middle of it going down or you could miss it. That's a possibility also. So we're going to hit decrease value. And I'm going to pause right here. And I'll be right back with you. These scans, especially just starting out, could take a few minutes. All right. So you see we got some addresses up now. So what I want to do now is I have my hotkeys set. You remember I tell you in every video just about, go to edit settings, set you up some hotkeys. And the ones I use are increase value, decrease, change, and unchanged. You can see what I use up here. Uh, and I use my hotkeys. Or you can just do it this way, but it can take some time. And sometimes when you can't go back and forth between the games, hotkeys are a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do unchanged value because we know the health decreased it has not decreased anymore so this will get rid of any unwanted values for the time being I'm not clicking on simple values only I've noticed that in some 64-bit games that even if it's a legit value if it happens to be a big value it will get rid of it also so be careful with that if you can't find it untick this right here and then try again okay all right, so let's go take some more damage. We still don't know exactly what our health is, so we just need to weed them down till we get to a couple we can try. All right, let's get away, make sure our health goes all the way down. You see the red bar going down. Okay, now we can pause it and decrease value. And it's just rinse, wash, and repeat after that. And I'm hitting unchanged value. Now what I want to do now is get back to the game stay away from the enemy without taking damage and hit unchanged value you see our health is not regenerating so we can hit unchanged that should weed a lot of them down while the game is running as well so that's a good thing to try and you want to jump around a lot and hit unchanged value all right now let's take some more damage okay he's going to bring a couple of more enemies up Unchanged value, we're still at the same health. Unchanged value, we had a pop up come up. Unchanged value, another pop up. And unchanged value back at the normal game. Take some damage. Alright. Wait on our health to go completely down. Avoid damage. And I screwed up. Hang on. I need to undo. I accidentally hit unchanged value. So, what we want to do is we want to undo that scan. That happens sometime and then go decrease value. Alright, let's take a look around. I mean, 890, that's still a lot, but I noticed this right off the bat. Uh, that looks like something we could try. This looks like something we could try. I kind of like looking when I get under 1,000 just to see what I can see. You can see irrelevant values all over the place, but it's still not enough. We still need to weed them down a lot more, but these are definitely some interesting values here I just go ahead and put them on the address list and I still want to weed these down okay so let's go ahead and weed some more down alright health went down the bar went down good and decrease value alright that's a good number right there and you see we got some interesting values all through here. So let's just get rid of these. I don't, I don't feel like looking at the addresses. And we'll just add them all consecutively. And what I'm doing is I'm holding down the control. Just hold down your control. If you're on a Mac, hold down uh, for a command, I believe. And bring all these over. And add that to your selected address. And basically what we can do is first of all let's make sure we have our health value. I don't believe that 3900 is it but what I want to do is I want to X all these that are alike and just see if we take damage after that and take a look 
our health did not go down. All right, so now if you understand, there are a lot of internal codes, but there is one specific internal code that is controlling all these other values. So all these other values are getting its information from one specific address that's controlling all of them. We need to find that address. So the way to do that is we just untick a couple and just wait till we start taking damage. It's process of elimination. Come on. Alright. We did not go down in health. So we know that these two were or these three were not it so let's untick one more and just do one at a time since we only got three left and take a look our health is going down so we can assume this one right here is our our boss internal so let's test it and I want to put that up to about 5,000 and see if it affects and take a look it's starting to affect other addresses as well that's what the uh, true internal will do is affect all the others and take a look and when we go back to it take a look I'm a little concerned about these these may not be written to until we actually take damage these may not have anything to do with our health at all I don't know hang on a sec let's go ahead and Freeze this value. I'm sorry. I already still had those X stall. Let's go back to the game. They're back and take a look. They all went to 5,000 except for this one here. So that may not have anything to do with our health. So we know that's the internal. But let's just be 100% sure. And take a look. None of them. All of them were set to 5,000. So we know we have found the correct internal value. So now they can well on us all day long. We got infinite health. But we do not want to have to search for this every time we bring up the game. So this is where script writing comes into play. So what we want to do, let's place a debugger on it. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Oh, hang on, I took a hit. So let me get away from these enemies here. Let's place a debugger on it. And let's just see what's going on with this address. I, get, I always go for what accesses the address. I like seeing everything that's going on with it. That means you're going to get what accesses this address, what's reading that particular health address with the value, and what's writing to it also. So let's go with what accesses. So it will show everything. So when we put the debugger on it, there we go. We can see right off the bat in the pause screen that there is two opcodes reading the health value. Let's go ahead and continue, and we want to take a hit. All right, we see there's other, when the game's running, we see that there's things reading our health value. That's interesting information. Now let's see what pops up when we take a hit. All right. So you see these only pop up when we actually take damage. So these are not constantly being accessed right here, as these are. And we can always tell the writing opcode because uh, the games use the Intel syntax, which whichever is on the right-hand side of the comma will affect what is over on the left-hand side of the comma. So we can see right off the bat that a register is writing a value to our health. If you take a look at RDI, RDI is holding the base address of our health, which is right here. And we see the offset, which is the distance away from that base address. So if you add 10 to this address right here, which 40 plus 10 is 50, you'll see that's our health address that is storing our health value. So basically what I like to do is go take a look also in Browse Memory Region right here at the address. Just to see, because usually programmers put things together, such as health, magic, or whatever. So let's go take a look and we want to put that on float and we see that's our current health and take a look right beside it that looks like it may be our health cap that's also keeping up with our health value here but we know that this is our internal correct health this looks like it may be a health cap that's good information we might need that in a minute 
So anytime you can find out more information, I always recommend trying to find a health cap. I do have some vids out that show you when they're not necessarily, you won't find your health cap necessarily beside your internal health. And I can show you how to trace back because somewhere it uh, interacts with your health cap, somewhere in the call structure. But, you know, that's a lot to go into, and I'm not going to do it in this video. But we see here, this is definitely our health cap. If we set this up to 6,000, we can test it, and it should fill our health bar all the way up. I'll tell you, look, it fills our health bar all the way up. We know that that is definitely our health cap. So now we can go on to the next step. We want to, uh, I hope I didn't quote, oh, good. Let's go take a look at what's happening at the writing op code. Right here. Also, you can check for a health cap and see what's being held in the registers themselves in more information right here. And then click on this for float, floating point registers. And you can see everything the XMM registers are holding at the time your health was written. You can see here, XMM1 is carrying our current health and doing other things. That may be how much damage was taken or, or whatever's going on with it. Uh, we can see that it looks like here it's converting. It's doing a lot of conversion with a double, actually. So it's moving a value into here. It looks like it may be a double value. And it's zeroing out the XMM0 register right here is subtracting a double if you see there uh, sub sd is subtracting a double and if you see this here this means convert uh, a floating point double or a double to a float so that basically that's what that's doing converting a double to a float and it's wanting to convert the xmm one register to a float value which will be that right there so it's converting a double to a float and then writing that information to our health so I don't really want to manipulate it here normally I like manipulating it at the subtraction I don't really want to do that here uh, this time around because I want to be able to write our cap value into the XMM1 register because we know it's going to hit that opcode and convert it it's going to think a float value is a double and convert it and it's going to be a strange number so down here is the best place to do it after it's already converted the double to a float right where it's writing it. So that's where we want to do our manipulation. But what we need to do is make see if this is a shared opcode. A shared opcode is your enemies are being affected here as well as yourself. So we need to separate ourselves out from our enemies. I'm going to clear that out so it's not taking up room in the system. Alright, so what we do is right click on the opcode. And we want to find out what addresses this instruction accesses. Make sure it's on float. Because that's what our health is. And we want to take a hit. So we know that there's our address popped up in there. And we want to hit our enemies. We do have a ranged attack. And we need to hit him. So if you see here. We have our health. And we have our two enemies. That's well, you need at least two enemies because that uh, you need to find a, a solid good compare. And what I like to do <clears throat> is instead of using the dissect data, I like using the commonalities feature right here. So what I do is I mark my main hero guy into group one. So we go and highlight it, find commonalities between addresses, mark selection as group one. And anything else will automatically fall into group two. Since you don't have a billion addresses here, we don't have to mark them into group two. They'll automatically be put into group two. So we can just go ahead and come over here and scan for commonalities. But if you had a bunch of addresses, then you just want to pick some random ones and, put, and manually put them in group two. This is good information here. You may want to take a screen print of that. Uh, because sometimes you can use the registers themselves as a sufficient compare if they hold the same information each and every time you bring up the game or you know new maps load up and they're still holding this information you can possibly use these as compares but I'm not going to do that we're going to go over to the RDI register which is our health base register but you can use pretty much any one of these that you want to but I always recommend starting here first and we're just going to double click 
and it'll bring up this screen here you can see here group one here's our base address and here's our enemies base address and for right now we're going to leave it on four bytes and I'm going to click on only find matching groups you do not necessarily need to do that but you can get a lot of offsets in there as well so you got to be careful with that or you'll have to do uh, some multi compares to get down to the offset that you need and I'll show you how to do that in other bids and I'll show it again later but for right now we just want to find a something simple it's wanting us to save this information so I want to put RDI and this is for health one for devil may cry and I have a specific folder I go to and I'm just gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it DNC5 for devil may cry 5 and that way I just store my information in there and let's see what we can find you see here this gave us a lot of uh, different offsets and I don't really like that so let's uh, let's see if we can redo the scan let's do a rescan right quick and we're just going to override that to see if we get any different information okay it's fine found too many so let's stop that and let's try that again sometimes you run into this hope it didn't freeze on me here I tell you what let's just try this again Marcus group one scan for commonalities let's go back to the RDI register let's do a scan on four byte and I'm just I'm not gonna save over that one I'm just gonna do a new one okay and this is what we want and sometimes you may have to redo it I don't know why it does that to be honest with you if the values are changing a lot it's a possibility it does that but just do it again until you get just single offsets and uh, you should be good to go all right things I look for I look for ones if you put it in hex mode I look for a string of F's or zeros or ones you can do it either way it don't really matter you can see these right here float values right here is our health this is the four byte version of our health. Put it on float and you can see 6,000. Here's our cap and here's the other health uh, thing that it's looking at. You can do it in float, you can do it in four byte, it doesn't matter. I prefer doing it in four byte because this is what I like looking for also. I like looking for things like this, ones. And just low numbers in a, and zeros. And you see enemies are a certain thing right here. I like looking for zeros and ones. And these are the top things I shoot for first. So zeros and ones, a string of S and doesn't change. And what I like to do is I'm going to take a screen print of this. And I bring up my paint. And I just save this information. And I'll show you why in a second. This is actually the second time I've done this, and I have a previous one that I've done. And I go compare the two, and I take a look. You see 160, and this is after I brought the game up several times, and the values are still the same, 0 and 1. They don't necessarily have to be the same for enemies, but as long as your guy's still 0 and enemies are not hitting 0, that's a good thing. And you see other values have changed from the two so you can see what may be a good one you see FC looks like a good one they're 121 and 4 F8 1 and uh, just miscellaneous values but our hero is staying one you can use that as a compare so you got some good ones here that are staying the same and that's what you want numbers that stay the same but I'm going to use that 160 it looks like everything stayed the same on that one this process can take some time but you know it can really help you find a good offset so we're going to use 160 we're going to go ahead and stop this and right into it right off the bat we're going to go ahead and we know our cap was at 14 and we know that our health is at 10 at four bytes away is side by side so we're going to use our cap and what we're going to do is we're going to get in our head what we want to do first we want to write our cap 
2xm in one and have our cap written to our health but we do not want our enemies cap written to it so that's why we use the compare so let's go ahead and we're going to do an AOB injection and we're just going to label this health one you can label it you can call it whatever you want to this is just the name of your uh, this just be the name of that first byte at this address right here in memory so that represents that address or that op code and we'll, we'll come up here to new mem and let's go ahead and start we want to put a compare CMP RDI plus remember 160 and we had 0 and 1 we want to compare our guy sorry about that we want to compare our guy which was 0 our guy was 0 we were on the left we take a look here let's go back to the paint this is what we saved our guy was in the blue and our enemies are in the red so we want to use our blue zero hopefully he stays zero all the time and you can do it two ways you can put jump if not equal to code and this is assuming that enemies never hit zero and you can also put jump if greater to code both will do the same thing if it's not zero jump if not equal it'll jump down here and just write its normal subtracted value if it's our hero, we want it to do something different. We want to move, and we need to do it for an XMM register, so we put move SS RDI plus 14. And remember, whatever's on the left affects whatever's on the right, so what we need to do is put XMM1 on the left. We want the cat value written to XMM1, and then the cat will be written to our health enemies will never come here they'll never meet condition they're one or they may be some different number but they're always greater than zero our hero will always be zero so the enemies will jump over that and it'll just write its subtractive value from where it's subtracted up here our hero will also be subtracted however when it gets to this op code it's replacing that subtractive value with our cap and our cap will be written to our health so let's just go test it And we want to turn off that X up here because we do want our health to go down. And we're just going to put health test. And we're going to turn it on. Alright, so we're just going to let them well on us a little bit. See what happens. Now you see our health is not going down. So let's see if it's writing our cap to that value. Let's let our health go down. This is kind of like a tutorial stage, so they're not really going balls out on me yet. So and I want to get down a lot. I want to see if it writes. Okay, that's a good bit. Let's turn our health back on, and when we take it, remember this air is only being accessed when we take a hit, so it's not going to write it right away until we actually take a hit. And when we take a hit this time, we should go to full health. Come on. Take a look at that. Now let's make sure our enemies can be killed. And take a look. They're dead. And we passed the level. And and we can go ahead and save this. We'll go ahead and save it. Save all your work. Devil May Cry 5. Save it to your cheat tables. And now we got infinite health, and now we can go look for other stuff in here that we want to find, and which we'll do. I think I'd like to work on next our jump and see if we can find our coordinates and see if we can manipulate maybe jump height, run speed, or whatever. See if we can maybe make some kind of fly. Who knows what we can do? But uh, we'll take a look into that later, okay? I want to thank my partners right quick. These are the people that uh, donate to cheat the game every month. Uh, you guys are so valuable to me. You mean the world to me. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I'm so terribly sorry. It's been a while. I'm getting back into the swing of it now. And we'll have some more videos coming out very soon. And we'll get into more complex things with this game here too. 
uh, we want to you know do some beginner things we want to do some advanced things and that's what we're going to do so we want to have all flavors in there for everybody so uh, you more advanced people thanks for sticking with me and continue to keep watching and we're going to get some things in there for you guys as well all right guys i'm out of here i'll see you next time you all take care keep on hacking most importantly please enjoy yourself that's really what it's all about cheat the game fellas because believe me doesn't mind cheating me you all take care now.